Okay, in this problem we're told that from the top of a 135 foot observation tower, a park ranger sights two forest fires on opposite sides of the tower. If their angles of depression are 42.5 degrees and 32.6 degrees, how far apart are the fires? Well, we assume here they don't talk much about his height, the ranger that is. If we assume he's on top of some tower, and the tower itself is 100 and, uh, let's say, let's say 135 feet. Uh, the rangers inside that tower, we're going to use that height of the tower uh, to, or speaking about the height of the ranger as well, you know, because if the ranger is on top of the tower, he, let's say he's in here somewhere, he's standing somewhere in the tower, the ranger has a height as well. But they leave that out for this problem, so we are going to ignore his height as well. I don't think it's going to be a factor in solving the problem. Now there are two forest fires, let's say this one on the left is uh, further than the one on the right, right? So the fire's over here, there's one fire, and we'll have a yellow fire over here as well. Let me make that a little more dramatic. This yellow fire is closer. Now, which of these two fires should correspond to the higher uh, angle of depression measure? Well, if we think about the line of sight of the ranger, right? Let's say at his level, you know, if he's standing up here, his height's a, this is about where he is. What is the angle of depression? Well, the angle of depression is the angle from that line of sight down. So if we have the yellow, let's say we'll measure it from here, where he's looking down at the yellow fire versus the red right here. Well, the red is, is clearly further away, right? But the angle of depression is measured right here. So the higher the red value, the higher the angle right here, what does that mean? The further down you're looking and the closer the fire is. Here on the right, right you can kind of see it's clearly a larger angle, and that means you're looking further down at a closer fire. So here we're going to associate this with the 42.5 degree angle measure, and on the left we're going to associate that with the 32.6 degree measure. And we want to know how far apart these two are. Well, we also know the height of the tower. It's going to be critical here. So let me put that measurement in. He's standing right there. So, okay, that vertical line, this height, right, that's 135. And we're dealing with feet here, so everything's in feet. So we have these two right triangles to deal with. And we'll deal with the red fire first. Oops, wrong color. And I think what's really nice about the angle depression problems is that we get to use transversals and parallel lines. This line, the hypotenuse of the right triangle, is a transversal cutting through this parallel line and the ground. And we're assuming those two are about parallel, which means what? Well, alternate interior angles are equal. So this angle is also 32.6 degrees. And now we're just back to an angle of elevation problem because the tangent of 32.6 degrees equals the opposite, which is 135 feet, over the adjacent. Now we don't know the adjacent side, right? That's how far the red fire is, but we'll use that in a moment. On the right-hand side over here, the same thing. We have this right triangle with the height, the adjacent side, which we're trying to find, and the uh, alternate interior angle, again, is 42.5 degrees. So that also becomes an angle of elevation problem. So the tangent of 42.5 degrees equals 135 over another adjacent side, we'll call it adjacent 2, that we don't know. So we have adjacent 1 and adjacent 2. So here, we want to know what the adjacent sides are. So in both equations, I multiply both sides by A. And what that'll, what will do, what will happen is, in the left-hand equation, we have A1 times a tangent of 32.6 degrees equals 135. And in this equation over here, we'll have a2 times a tangent of 42.5 degrees equals 135. Okay, so here I'm going to solve for a1 and then solve for a2. Solve for a1, we divide by the tangent 
of 32.6 degrees, right? That's just a number. So we're dividing both sides by that number, and we'll get the value of this adjacent side. And we're trying to find out how far apart these two fires are from each other. So we're going to add up these two adjacent distances, the total distance from one fire to another. Okay, so we're almost there. Here, the first adjacent distance is equal to what? Well, we'll use a calculator here. We have 135, right, divided by, put parentheses, tangent of 32.6, close parentheses, 211.093, so 211.09, what was that, sorry, 0 0.0936 six one six seven that's an approximation right here on the right we divide both sides by the tangent of 42.5 you know with these approximations as well uh, you can carry them in the calculator so you don't need to necessarily round them as well and I'll try and show you how to do that these cancel out and a2 is going to equal what that's 147.32, sorry, 66476. And you could add up these two. Now, if you need a precise answer, um, or they want you to round the last step, we can go back. And here, if you think about what we're really adding, since A equals 135 over the tangent of 32.6, we could say, well, let's add that. Let's say we have 135 divided by the tangent of 32.6, and we're going to add that to the other a value, which is what? 135, close those parentheses, plus this, this adjacent value, 135 divided by the tangent of 42.5, close parentheses, and here, what this does is gives you the most precise answer, and now you round to whatever degree. So I'm getting 358.4202644. If you had to round to the nearest tenth, uh, you could put 300, right, and 58.4 feet. So here, uh, however we set this up, it's nice to be able to, to round to the last step and add up those two adjacent distances, uh, which is the total distance between both fires. Thanks.